All right, juniors. I hope all of you had a fine time at our 20s party. Uh, I'm sorry, Lenny, for winning the battle I'm dancing, but, you know, you can't win every time. All right. Causes of the Great Depression. As it implies, it was a uh, downturn. Depression is a low point. It is a low point in the economy. This image here, uh, one of the most famous images from the Great Depression, uh, the migrant mother and her children. And we'll get more into uh, this week at the effects of it. But today we're looking at what caused this economic downturn. And one of the first problems was debt. <clears throat> Before the 1920s, people are living fairly simple lives. Um, this image here, you have a kind of typical kitchen, and you can see there's there's no electric devices. Uh, it's fairly basic, and most people, this is how they live. Um, they don't have a lot of uh, expensive items, and they're they're living uh, a fairly basic life. As the 20s roll around, you start having more appliances. Uh, there is more wealth, or imagined wealth after the uh, First World War. And people are buying refrigerators. They're buying washing machines. Uh, they have nice sinks. And in many times, people are saying, well, we need all these items. Look at these items we need. So they, they borrow money. Um, and in the process of borrowing money, banks are just lending out money to anyone. Uh, times are good. People are, there's there's money around, so banks aren't very concerned that people won't be able to pay that money back. So a lot of Americans have a great deal of debt. <clears throat> and it is not just from personal appliances. We've already mentioned automobiles. People are buying cars. Um, they are buying land. So farmers are buying a lot of uh, new machines to help them farm. We've mentioned this before, uh, months ago. Think back as you're reviewing, hopefully, for the uh, midterms. We have the farmers that are, are borrowing a lot of money because the prices of uh, crops are going down, so they need to farm more land. And to do so, you need more machines and more land as a whole. <coughs> so most Americans across the spectrum are borrowing money, and they are falling into debt. And to coincide with all these, this buying of items, uh, the companies that are producing goods, they start producing them, producing too much of them. They have an overproduction of goods. And one of the reasons is people don't really know how this consumer goods work. They imagine, all right, people, look, everyone's buying refrigerators. Everyone's buying cars. We need to keep producing refrigerators and cars. Whereas in reality, the refrigerator I buy, I'm going to keep it for about 10 years, if not more, hopefully more, 20 years before I get a new one. So while people are buying these items, yes, um, there isn't going to be a continued demand. Uh, once you buy a car, you want to keep your car for as long as you can so you don't have to buy a new one. So. Goods are being produced at a high rate, but people aren't really buying them again. Uh, also in Europe, Europe's trying to recover from a war, so it isn't like the U.S. can just ship goods out to another country. These countries have been decimated by war. They're not in the mood to buy a refrigerator. They're hoping to build their house back. So there's now an overproduction of products. So you have thousands of cars that are being built, and yes, people are buying thousands of cars, but it's going to get to the point where well, we don't need any more cars right now, or I can't afford another. And one of the places that there is a lot of money is the stock market. Now, to buy a stock, let's say we want to buy one share of uh, Ford motor cars. Perhaps at that time, that one share costs $50. Now, if you look at the title up here, what a practice that was going on at this time was what's known as selling on margin. Now, to buy at that time a share in Ford motor cars for fifty dollars, 
to, if you're selling a margin, you only have to put down $10 of it. So I could buy a $50 share for $10. And when the stock market is going fine, um, the shares are going to go up and up and up. So I will sell my share later on. Perhaps it's now $100. Um, and I'm going to make back my money. The problem is, though, people are buying shares with money they do not have. It is like taking a loan. You're buying, you're buying uh, your refrigerator with money you don't have. You ask the bank for money, and you just have to pay it back. Selling a margin, people are assuming that their shares of the stock market are going to keep going up, so they're not worried about it. So people are now, they owe a lot of money on shares that they are hoping will increase in value. <coughs> and this seems fine, and it works out well for a while, but if in any case that those shares start to lose value um, or people are coming to collect the money that you owe uh, then that's gonna start to arise a problem because in reality you don't have that money so the stock market is being built on uh, investments that aren't backed by actual money so while Ford company might be valued at a great cost or a great uh, price in reality, the money that is behind it, it isn't all there. And banks similarly are investing in the stock market. So they're taking money that you as a bank customer are putting in the bank and they're investing it. So that's why if you go to the bank, the bank will say, we can guarantee uh, interest on the money that you have in the bank. And interest, they're not just saying, hey, we're nice, we're gonna give you money for putting money here. The way that they get interest, that they can afford that, is um, they're going to invest your money. And it currently happens today. Every bank is going to invest money that people are putting in it. And it's, it's smart. It's smart of the bank. It helps increase the money that they have. However, if the banks are stupid, and in the 1920s there's thousands of banks, and not all of them are very well run. If the bank isn't making good investments, then that money that you put in the bank to say, all right, I'm going to put my bank money in here so I don't spend it. That bank is investing it poorly. You could lose your money because of the bank. And that money is not guaranteed. Currently, if you go into the bank, uh, it says FDIC, which means the federal government is insuring your deposits. So even if that bank fails, the government will ensure that you do not lose all of your money. It's normally insured up to $10,000. At this time, however, there is no protection for you. So your bank goes and invests in a stock that fails, you could lose all of your money, and a lot of banks close down. All right, so we have all these problems. People are, they are borrowing money that they don't have or can't pay back. You have banks investing money poorly. Uh, you have stocks that are bought with money that people don't have. So it all comes to a head in what's called Black Tuesday. Investors in Wall Street, uh, this is Wall Street here, they are suddenly getting nervous about the value of their stocks. So investors start selling their shares. So they can sell high in, in case those shares start dropping. And the whole way a share, or, or the stock market works is people have confidence in a company. People have confidence in the value of something. So if people are confident in it, then more people will invest in it. Now, this day, people start losing confidence in the value of the stock market, of the value of their shares. And in one day, $150 billion are lost in America because people are saying, I, I don't trust the value of this, this stock and I'm going to sell. And suddenly millionaires who in the morning woke up as millionaires, they at the end of the day find themselves without a dime in their pocket because all of their money was caught up in the stock market. And now they have nothing because when they were able to sell their shares, which might have been $50 in the morning, now it's only $0.10. Cents. 
So with the stock market crash, banks then, banks are investing in the stock market, are losing all their money. So people rush to the banks and say, I need to withdraw my money from my bank. And the banks now don't have any money to give out to people. Um, so while normal people weren't investing in the stock market, they are dramatically affected by the crash of the stock market as well. Companies, companies make, uh, can invest, the reason people invest money into companies, companies use that money and they can undertake projects. They can hire new people, build new machines. And with no investments coming in, companies are now struggling. They can't hire as many people. Um, so you have this, this rippling effect uh, from the crash of the stock market. And so this Black Tuesday is the beginning of the Great Depression, the beginning of uh, this, this great economic downturn in the United States and ends up spreading out across the world.